Greetings from the Lone Star State. Today we are exploring Houston, Texas. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. We're gonna be staying at San Jacinto Riverfront RV Resort, a little over 20 miles east of downtown, right on the east bank of the San Jacinto River. Let me go and check in. Here we are, this is our pull-through site. They're supposed to have an infinity pool on the other side, so let's go check that out. It is a very large, very clean RV resort, two swimming pools, and some sites even have their own spa. Here's the San Jacinto River, and there are some very nice riverfront sites. And across the river, we can see all these industrial installations, oil refineries. Also out there, the San Jacinto Monument. The RV park has all these colorful cottages as well. If you don't happen to have an RV, you can stay in those. And here's the infinity pool. Very nice with this view of the river. And it's really hot today, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back to the RV and grab a couple of towels and take a dip in the pool. The spa? Hmm, it might be too hot for that. Uh, going back, it's very hot here in Texas. Today, it's in the 90s, probably feels like a hundred. But the San Jacinto River, or Jacinto, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, very nice. It turns out, you know, Jacinto, and my mom always talks about him. It's a, used to be a great uncle of mine, I guess. I never met the guy, but um, my mom's always talking about him, so. Uh, there you go, that's why I'm going to pronounce it Jacinto, because my great-uncle's name was Jacinto. Of course, needless to say, my great-uncle Jacinto has nothing to do with San Jacinto, which is the Spanish spelling for the Christian Saint Jacinth. Let me tell you, so many times I have trouble figuring out how to pronounce names of places that were originally Spanish words, and I tend to default back to Spanish, but that's not always the case, as I've found out. Apparently, it really depends how the original settlers of the place called it. And I've kind of come up with a rule of thumb after visiting the Southwest several times. And uh, let me tell you, if we were in New Mexico, I bet you two bottles of tequila it would be pronounced Jacinto, as New Mexicans tend to preserve the Spanish pronunciation. Texas, on the other hand, kind of makes it a point to pronounce everything as you would in English. Less confusing, I guess. And then in California or Arizona, all bets are off, so you have to ask, as I usually do when in doubt. All right, enough linguistics. Let's enjoy the pool. Ah, it is... Uh, oh. I'm sinking. Well, it is an infinity pool, isn't it? At least that's how they sold it to me, and uh, it sure is. Let's go to, all the way to the edge. You see, it's an infinity pool. It's like, you can't tell where the pool ends, but it ends right here. And you can actually sit down on the edge and, and enjoy the beautiful scenery. The San Jacinto Monument, built in honor of my great uncle. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Boom! They have a spa. They have a spa. Too. Let's go explore.
there, right in front of us, is the San Jacinto Monument, built between 1936 and 1939. It is the world's tallest masonry column. The 220-ton star atop commemorates the site of the Battle of San Jacinto, the decisive battle of the Texas Revolution. It is quite an impressive monument, let me tell you. There, we can also see Battleship Texas nearby. Let's go to the top. From inside the recently renovated elevator, we can see the emergency stairs. From the top, we get a commanding view of the area, the Houston Ship Channel, and once again, Battleship Texas, notable for being the first US battleship to become a permanent museum ship and one of the only seven remaining ships and the only remaining capital ship to have served in both world wars. There's the Fred Hartman Bridge, which we took to get here, and what we're listening to in the background is a recording narrating the events that transpired here on April 21st, 1836. There's downtown Houston barely visible in the distance. There's a monument and a star. Amazing. It is like an endless ocean of industrial facilities, oil refineries. I don't even know what all this is, but I've never seen anything like it. Nothing this vast. And somehow, nature manages to coexist. There's the old manual elevator lever, which nowadays is just for show as we go back down. The base of the monument houses the San Jacinto Museum of History. There are several displays and paintings related to the Battle of San Jacinto, as well as some artifacts from the oil industry and the pictures of the construction of the monument and many, many other displays. Finally, here we have a model of Battleship Texas, which we will visit some other time. I promise. Outside, they are starting to lower the six flags of Texas. And he's doing the Mexican flag right now. And the six flags, of course, Spain, France, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the United States of America, and the Confederate States of America. Well, this was really cool. I really enjoyed seeing the monument. Now, let's continue. Let's go eat. Hmm, I wonder what happened there. Oh no, there's a train coming. And it is a slow one. Oh well, looks like we're gonna be here for a while. Although, I don't really mind all that much. I like trains. Ooh, chlorine. Inhalation hazard. I'll hold my breath, just in case. Alright, the plan is to go to the Kima Boardwalk, which is a little further south, almost halfway to Galveston Island, actually. And they have restaurants, an amusement park, shopping. Should be fun. The wooden roller coaster looks kind of vintage, but it only dates back to 2007. The boardwalk itself opened up in 1998, although there have been several additions and expansions throughout the years. 
they also have a bunch of these uh, carnival game stalls. Very cool. And there's the train that goes all around the boardwalk, which is a replica of the famous 1863 CP Huntington train. Plenty of restaurants, and it seems to be a pretty cool place for the locals, you know, mainly families to hang out. It being a Tuesday, it doesn't seem very busy, but I betcha it gets packed on the weekends. Here we are, walking along the narrow channel between Clear Lake and Galveston Bay. Are those shrimping boats I see? You see, not very busy at all. Lots of birds though, and I bet you all those birds and these two cats here eat better than you and me. Hello there. Today is obviously a slow day here. Okay, enough wandering around. Let's find something to eat and being so close to the Gulf, it kind of makes sense to try the local seafood. We sit at the bar while we wait. There is about a half an hour wait time. Alright, it is almost time. Let's take our drink outside and join all the other people waiting. The birds are such a nuisance that the servers have to come out in pairs, one in charge of carrying the food and the other one to scare the birds off. Tell you what, let's go someplace else. Cool, they have street performers. And do you know why the birds are so aggressive? People have been feeding them, that's why. Local IPAs? Oh, that was close. Yep. The bird almost ate my fries. We ended up eating at this place called Bill's Burgers and Bar New York in Texas. And if it wasn't for the birds that were a real nuisance and that the service was a little slow, I mean, the burgers were amazing and the chili fries were too, but that's the only thing. And, and this is the thing. They, they have these machines for you to feed the fish but the birds didn't get the memo and they eat from the, the same machine you know the, the people feed the, the fish and the, the birds eat and and then the birds think that your food is their food and they're a nuisance but other than that it was a great meal And good morning to y'all. Today we are going to explore downtown itself. But first, I have some CDs and stickers to mail. Travelingroberts.com slash stickers if you want to get yours. We like to explore cities as much as we do nature, especially when we're talking about one of the great American cities, Houston, Texas. Number four in the USA, actually, population-wise. Let's find parking, which in a big city can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes because of the price more than anything. Let's park right here and explore walking. The only way to really get to know a city. And here we are, walking along Main Street. The metro rail tracks in the middle. We don't really know where we're going, not yet anyway. But meanwhile, check out the sky pool on the top of Market Square Tower. Here's the famous, actually iconic, Houston East inspired mural. It was originally part of an advertising campaign, although it has become a landmark on its own right. 
It is still early, so there's not too much activity around the city yet. Although, it is past noon, so I suspect the city will be coming alive very soon with lunch hour traffic. Here we stumble upon Market Square. Very nice, actually. There is some street art here in Market Square as we continue walking around. This La Carafe bar, we wanted to see it, but it is closed. It is actually supposed to be haunted, and it happens to be the oldest commercial building in the city. Houston slowly coming alive as business people come down from their high-rise office buildings for their lunch break. Definitely a vibrant downtown, especially at this time of the day, at least Main Street. So many places to eat, so many choices. Now we are in a segment of Main Street that is pedestrian only, so it is most appropriately called Main Street Square. Here we have this piece of public art, a sculpture called Planters and Stems by Floyd Newsom. It represents the development of Houston and its entrepreneurs. The light rail system goes straight through the middle of the square. On the next block, there's this really cool fountain that the trains kind of go through, but it doesn't seem to be on at the time. Lots of construction, lots of new development here in Houston. You might say, what are you guys doing walking into a mall? She said to go to the right, yeah, that's the, that's the entrance. Well, it is not the mall we are really interested in, although that Tejas Grill sports bar sounds tempting. We are going down into the downtown tunnel system. This expansive network of tunnels connects 80 downtown buildings. But they are kind of hard to find because the entrances, like the one we came in through, are inside the buildings. And I've heard that it's really easy to get lost down here. We've seen tunnel systems similar to this one before, in cities up north, mainly designed to protect people from the cold and the snow and the elements. This one is a nice air-conditioned respite from the hot and muggy surface street level. You could really spend the whole day down here, well, in theory, your whole life, without having to go back to the surface. But we do. We have the rest of Houston to explore. This is really cool. We emerge by the fountain on Main Street Plaza, immediately surrounded by the sounds of the city. It is a totally different world underground, and one not obviously apparent unless you know about it. The fountain is on, kind of, although I've seen pictures of the water jets going much, much higher than this, much more impressive. Well, yeah, as far as cities go, Houston so far, I like it. We are getting kind of hungry, but we are even thirstier. And remember I said I was kind of tempted by that Tejas Grill sports bar before? Well, let's go in and have a Carbatch Double IPA. A viewer recommended we ate at this place called Pepacitos Cantina, which is a local chain, part of the Papa's family of restaurants, and the bartender at the Tejas Grill was adamant we ate someplace else, and he was recommending a restaurant where a friend of his was the manager. Hmm, I suspect maybe he had an ulterior motive, or perhaps he felt Papacitos wouldn't be authentic enough. 
it being a chain owned by a Greek guy no less. Well, in any case, here we are. Let me tell you, a chain is not necessarily bad and this place is really nice. And I'm happy to report the food is excellent. So the bartender was wrong and the viewer was right as usual. You guys give me the best advice. Let's continue. This nice park here is called Discovery Green and the white building with the funny looking red periscope pipes is the convention center. And there's another transparent glass swimming pool. They must be a thing. Coming up ahead, Minute Maid Park, home of the Astros. And there's Irma's, the restaurant the bartender recommended actually. And we've got to move the car. Our parking expired. It turns out there's another YouTuber, video creator in town, one of the original van life travel vloggers before van life was even a thing. So we're looking forward to meeting him in person. This looks like a good spot. Okay, make up your mind. Anyways, there is plenty of parking. We're actually parked in front of the Christ Church Cathedral, the city's first religious congregation, founded in 1839. Here's where we're going, the Flying Saucer. Located in the former S.H. Cress and Co. building, dating back to 1913. Nowadays, San German lofts, luxury condos. I love to see the juxtaposition of the old with the new. And this is a prime example, 609 Main, completed in 2017. All right, let's do it. We are meeting up with James Willock, also known as Wanderlust Estate. Cool bar, by the way. Waiting for James. <laughs> it is James the Wanderlust is dead himself. Meet Robert right. here. So How instead doing, of buddy? just talking to him online all the time. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here hanging out with James Wander Lost Estates. Robert over here at Robert's Travels, awesome guy. We just talked for like three hours. They need to go to bed now because you know, you know, Robert's you know, a lightweight. I, I need to get my beauty sleep, you know. And, uh, <laughs> And you know, we, we, we have, to be honest, we've had a busy day here in Houston, but it's so great to finally meet you, uh, James. Awesome. Uh, of course, you were one of the original uh, Nomad uh, YouTube channels, Wanderlust Estate. Check them out on the YouTubes. Thanks, guys. It's nice to meet you all. All of you guys that have never met me, I know some of you probably have. And uh, Most of you probably have. Yeah. It was very cool meeting James Wanderlust Estate. And um, hope to meet him again in the future. Uh, we're heading back to the car here as, uh, as it gets dark here in Houston, Texas. Well, time flew today. Let's stop real quick here to take a picture of the sunset and we're gonna call it a night. It is so beautiful, particularly with the silhouette of all the refineries in the foreground.
Well, good morning. We've got one more thing to do here in Houston, and they seem to have RV parking, so we are going to visit it on our way out with Minitini in tow. And if you guessed the Space Center, you are correct. Yes, we are saving perhaps the best for last. That is, if you are into the space thing, and I am. Ever since Jim Lovell said the famous phrase, Houston, we have a problem. From somewhere out there between the Earth and the Moon, I've wanted to visit this place. Now, was it Jim Lovell or Tom Hanks? I can't remember. We're parked here at the Johnson Space Center, or Space Center Houston, I think it's the official name. And they have bus and RV parking, so if you come, you know where you can park with your RV. It is a little bit overwhelming when you walk in, let me tell you, but I love all this stuff. Anything space related. Here's the lunar module. This is so cool. Here they have a model of the space shuttle and uh, this is the International Space Station, I guess. But before there was ever an International Space Station, there was Skylab, which never quite worked as expected. It was plagued by all kinds of problems, not to mention NASA budget cuts. In any case, it is really cool to see how spacious it was inside, at a time right after the Apollo program when astronauts barely had room to move. This must have felt like a mansion in space. Cool! A space toilet. Let's check out Independence Plaza, where they have the modified 747 that used to carry the space shuttle. That's a nice picture. Ooh. There it is. It is actually quite impressive to see it in person. Oh, they have elevators. The top floor here is Space Shuttle Independence. Not an actual space shuttle, but a full-scale high-fidelity replica, which was originally on display at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. From 1993 until 2011, when it was replaced by the retired Atlantis, an actual space shuttle. In 2012, they moved it here. And in 2014, they put it on top of the plane. I always imagined that part would be bigger. Let's go into this room here on the lower level. It kind of looks like a storage room with a bunch of lockers, apparently part of the living quarters as well. This seems to be the airlock, perhaps, and they have an EMU spacesuit, specially designed for the space shuttle program. First of all, they were reusable, unlike previous versions of the spacesuit. It had air pressure and a temperature control. It was practically a wearable spacecraft. Oh, forgive me, but that's a toilet. This is a representation of many of the payloads the space shuttle carried out into space. Oh, let's go to the plane. NASA 905 here was one of two SCA, short for Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, which was an extensively modified Boeing 747. They were used to transport the space shuttle from its landing location back to the launch facility at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Its few final flights were to deliver retired space shuttles to their respective museums. The only part of the aircraft that remained nearly unchanged was first class for NASA personnel. The original American Airlines first class seats. Restricted area, do not enter. Oh man, I wanted to go to the bar. The rest of the main cabin, which was mostly stripped down to save on weight, now houses a bunch of exhibits. Very cool to see it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's the bulkhead that they built to support the weight of the shuttle. By the way, the Independence here went through some major renovations to make it look more like a modern shuttle, and one of those was the addition of replica thermal tiles to the bottom. Very cool, very cool to see. Here's a Soyuz capsule, the Russian workhorse since the late 60s. So much to see, so little time. As usual, I underestimated the time that it would take us to see the Space Center. And we still have to take two trams, one to the historic Mission Control, one to Building 9, where they have the vehicle mock-up facility. Oh, and there's also the Saturn V and the other rockets, but all in time. This looks just like the set where they faked the moon landing. I'm kidding, of course. It is a very nice, detailed diorama, though. Very nice. Here we are, about to touch a moon rock. And this is a Mercury capsule. It is time to finally get on the tram. Here we are at the historic Mission Control building and they have this display illustrating the evolution of computers at Mission Control and uh, that's all I'm gonna be able to show you. They are using Mission Control for the upcoming lunar missions, so since they are doing real work in there, photography is not allowed. Now we are driving by what they call Memorial Grove. And all these trees are planted here in memory of NASA employees, their families, and other individuals who made noteworthy contributions to America's space program. Let's go see some rockets, shall we? Here's Little Joe 2, named after the first rocket designed for manned spaceflight, this one, however, was used to test the systems for the Apollo program. And here's a Mercury Redstone, the first one to put Americans in space. Okay, let's see what we really came to see. The Saturn V. Mm, tiny little rocket. Actually, tiny is the capsule sitting atop, compared to the size of the rest of the rocket, which is taller than the Statue of Liberty when standing up. And here's where they would store the, the lunar module for deployment. By the way, this is the real deal, not a mock-up. Actually, one of only three surviving Saturn Vs. Amazing how intricate the rocket engine can be. You really gotta be a rocket scientist to figure that one out. Yeah, this was really cool. The other two surviving Saturn Vs, by the way, are at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and at the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, which I saw last year. <clears throat> Only in Texas, huh? We're gonna hop on yet another tram to visit the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility. And uh, here we are. Kind of crowded, huh? We all gather along this narrow catwalk to see the main floor. These are all full-size models of spacecraft used for training purposes, mainly. Let me tell you, some of the stuff they are working on down there is actually really cool.
I'm gonna say one last thing. That's gonna be one super interesting job working here. Well, time's up. We're like four hours behind schedule, but the delay was well worth it. Visiting the Space Center is a must if you are in Houston. Of course, leave it up to us to attempt to drive across Houston in the middle of rush hour traffic. Yep, impeccable timing. Well, what's bound to happen? We're stuck in traffic, in rush hour traffic. We're getting out of Houston. And Space Center took a lot longer than, than I expected. I expected, expected you know, two or three hours we out of there. But uh, the tram system, it's not the most efficient system. And uh, yeah, it takes, it takes a long time. If you come to the Space Center and you want to see everything, I locate uh, almost the whole day because I would say at least four hours. Uh, we'll make it to San Antonio eventually. The GPS says 8 p.m., but I have a feeling we're going to get there by 9, well into the night. But we'll see San Antonio tomorrow. And for you, that might be the next video. It is a long, long, uneventful drive from Houston to San Antonio. As I was saying, on the next episode, we will explore San Antonio, Texas. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in 